All right, here I am in Central Texas, Taylor to be exact, and I'm walking out my room, uh, heading over to my lesson. Literally, here's the hotel where that Luscom is. That's where my lesson is. So anyway, so I'm off here to meet Dayton Dabs. Met him at the Wings Over Houston Air Show, whew, I guess about almost a year ago. And uh, he had a daughter gyro on the flight line. I thought, oh my God, this is pretty cool. I got to get a rating, you know, one day for the pit Karen. So anyway, uh, we're starting very early. The sun's just barely coming up because we're trying to beat the Texas heat. So, all right, so here's the gyro. Great timing. What's happening, hey, my man? man? How you doing? I haven't seen you since. That was a, a year ago. October, September, yeah, September, awesome. Absolutely. I poked my head in here yesterday. I arrived early and uh, you were already gone, but they were playing with the Cessna. So that's ought to be fun. Absolutely. Oh. Absolutely. Yes, yeah, so I read all the, uh, the material coming out on the deal. And it was interesting. I didn't realize that, uh, you know, there was, you know, a difference on the blade thing, the three different sections, you know, I mean, the, the helicopter thing is pretty much everything's kind of lifting, but, right. uh, and I knew, I knew about, you know, the auto rotation principle and all that stuff, but what right. I didn't realize is there was three distinct separate, uh, you know, blending uh, situations on the, on the wing. There right? absolutely is, and each, uh, in flight, each section is constantly changing right. depending on what your rotor RPM is. Right. Doing. Uh, um, and your speed and stuff. Right, exactly. Your speed, your loading, uh, everything's going to adjust uh, um, how that how the rotor reacts. However, naturally, the an interesting thing about gyroplanes or uh, auto rotating rotor to begin with is a rotor in auto rotation will never exceed three G's. Now, the why is that? Just because it's the centrifugal force against the toning effect. No, the the way the rotor works, it when it when it pulls in uh, over three G's, it's actually going to bleed off its own load. So uh, you'll you'll speed it up. It'll uh, it'll pick up a lot of speed as you pull, start pulling more right. G's. So when you come, and, right? Right. Well, yeah, I mean, it's naturally going to come. Yeah, so right. we don't we can't. But it's like a ballet right. dance. It's like somebody spinning. And they pull themselves in. They spin fast. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. But uh, um, once, if you pull more than that, what it's going to do is it's just going to slide through, uh, slide through that. It's going to bleed off its own load. Oh, really? Uh, um, the, um, yeah, and it has to do with those three sections constantly changing. And, huh. Um, so when you pull more G's, you're, what's happening is, is your, your uh, driving thing becomes bigger and your lift thing becomes less and so it just goes through it. Well, or not necessarily. Not necessarily. Really, what happens is the faster you go, the driven portion of the blade comes in more, the driving portion of the blade comes in more, and the stalled portion of the blade gets smaller. Right. So, uh, in in reality, I'll, I'll draw it yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Um, so there we go. Let's take a look at. Let's take a look at this. So we have this blade here. Okay. So this blade is turning this direction okay. and this direction. And we have three distinct portions. We have the stall portion. Right, inside. Right, there and there. We have the driving portion, which is there and there. And we have the driven portion. Yeah, so this this section of the blade stalled because it's not rotating fast enough and it's got a high angle of exactly. attack. This thing here is actually using the process of auto rotation because of the angle, it's got a forward, uh, forward vector that drives the blade forward. Correct. And then this part out here is actually what maintain, or creates your lift while you're flying. And that's correct. The driving portion is also creating a lot of lift. Right. Uh, um, so what happens, uh, let me break this down a little bit more. Let's go stalled, driving, and driven. In every portion of the, the rotor, you have the same force from under the, under right. the rotor, correct? Uh -huh. Yeah, because the, uh, 
because it takes upward flow to mit to right. That's the way an autogyro flies. Right, and it doesn't matter if, it, if you're on the stalled portion or the dr the driven portion. Right, the same amount of airflow is coming up from under the rotor system. Right, but the so. difference is the speed increases as it goes out Correct. to the tip, so it effectively lowers the angle of attack of the blade Correct. because it's going faster against the the basic same relative wind to the gyro. Exactly. Okay, okay so this actually has a. Uh, has, actually has an airfoil, uh, this Correct. particular it, one. And this is a, a, a um, asymmetric airfoil. You can see it's, right. it's cambered on the, the top, it's flat on the bottom. Right. Uh, um, it's got a little bit of reflex in the correct. trailing edge there. Huh. Basically what that does is it allows it, it's most efficient to, over the, uh, um, it creates positive lift. Okay, okay, now I am seeing something here that I questioned when I was reading the material. Okay. And this actually has got twist in it so as as the the as the angle comes out it rotates a leading edge down doesn't right. it or not or is that just a an optical illusion i don't have the proper answer for you i'm not sure about that well come here and look at it yeah it, it yeah, appears see that it's way flat there it appears that way the rotor is also though turned to the side right now so oh yeah 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 Yeah, we can take that off. Yeah, well, maybe. Yeah, it's hard to tell. That's, that's an excellent question. I'm not sure about any blade twist that they put into it. To, um, well, you know, maybe it doesn't have any. Maybe that is an optical illusion. Yeah, I don't think. Or maybe it doesn't, huh? <laughs> now, would it make any difference if it was rotated 90 degrees? Uh, it would make a difference in the way that the... Let's pull the gyro out and let's take a look at it. Okay. So, are you, are you familiar with the idea of gyroscopic precession? Basically, uh, yeah, yeah, it reacts 90 degrees later. And so on a helicopter on the cyclic, they, the input's 90 degrees before the action. Correct. And I'll see if I can explain this well. It looks so damn flimsy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, from the back here, I, I think it's straight. <clears throat> I don't think there's any twist built into it. <clears throat> it's kind of a... I'm not familiar oh, it, with any twist in it. You know, it's an optical illusion because if I look at it from here, it looks like that's flatter. It's just because of the angle that I'm seeing it at. Right. And when I come out here, that looks flatter. It's just an optical illusion. I think it's straight. Huh. There's, uh, there's very, very little pitch in these blades. The, um, basically, you get your angle of attack by that rotor constantly being uh, right. backwards to the, uh, um, to the wind. But uh, the blade itself, there's very little pitch, and the pitch is not adjustable. Uh, right, like on a collective on a helicopter. Exactly. So, yeah, you don't have a collective but like, like you do on a helicopter. All of your, uh, all of your lift generated simply by uh, when we add power that will put more airflow going forward through the through the system or it'll push us further forward which right. with every action there's an equal opposite reaction right. the air comes uh, comes through the rotor system you get a greater amount of air the rotor's going to turn faster you're going to get well it, in effect it's like putting your hand out at a certain angle going down the road and then going faster it's going to create more exactly. lift exactly exact same yeah. same idea. this what a lot of people don't realize is a gyroplane is nothing but an airplane with a rotating wing. Right. More, more or less, this this is your wing up here. Mm -hmm. So uh, um, it's it's not that complex with the uh, um, as far as the uh, complexities of a helicopter. It's right. A much simpler exactly. system. You don't have to worry about torque because there is no torque going to the to the rotor because system. Because you're not driving the rotor system. Exactly. Which when you do in a helicopter, what happens is when you drive the rotor up there, then the helicopter wants to go the other way. But right. because this free wheels, uh, it doesn't it can it can fly with just a uh, uh, you know a, 
or kind of a vertical stabilizer, which kind of dampens the yaw. So as long as it's moving forward, it you know stays trailing. But with a helicopter, when you increase and decrease RPM and change the collective and stuff, you're always monkeying with the with the Absolutely. RPM because the tail rotor on a helicopter is what it's an anti-torque rotor is really what it exactly. is. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And there's always a, a, a positive pitch back there because once you hover, you know, the helicopter wants to go opposite the deal. So you got a positive pitch on your blade. And uh, if you basically want to go one way, you increase the pitch. And if you want to go the other way, you decrease the pitch. But you never actually, I, I've actually got a, uh, I've got a helicopter at Fantasy of Flight, one of those Hiller Hornets. Okay, yeah. And it actually has a, has a, a ramjet engine out at the tip that drives the rotor system. So because you're not actually driving the deal, you don't, have to have a you don't have to have a tail rotor. They put a little one in the back there, but it's actually set up, in the fact, there's only one blade. There's a counterbalance on the other side, and on the one blade, it's totally neutral, and so it goes one way for left and the other way for right. So, interesting, yeah. very interesting. And the only way they added it, originally they didn't have it on there, but they wanted to be able to make crosswind you know, right. be able to rotate into the wind and make crosswind, right. you know, adjustments. Uh, and at low forward airspeed, this, yeah. uh, I'm sure it's very helpful to have. Uh, um, but uh, very cool. Well, yeah, that's the that's the general concept behind the gyro plane. To, like you said, it's, it's like grabbing a fan. If you have a fan and you grab the blades, the body of the blades is going to turn on. The, that's the concept mm -hmm. behind a helicopter. On this one, there's no... There's no motor going up there, so if you grab the blade, the blade wouldn't turn, the, the gyro wouldn't turn. Okay, now you were you were about to say something about precession, and I know in a helicopter, the blades spin around, and of course you're having to bump the rotor head to make it do what you want to do, right. and because of precession, it always acts 90 degrees after you, right. uh, you, know, you put the input, which actually is a great example is like on a P-51 when you take off, you got 3,000 RPM on a big, heavy aluminum propeller. And when you tip that nose up, in effect, that gyro, you punched, you push the top. Right. It reacts 90 degrees later. So what happens is the airplane swings to the left, and it takes a lot of right rudder on takeoff before, you know, and once you get the tail up, you know, then, then it kind of goes away. And that's one of the reasons why, because the propellers turn to the right on like American airplanes, right. that's why the conning towers are on the right side of an aircraft carrier deck because the airplane wanted to swing off to the left. Interesting. Is that I never, interesting? never knew that. Absolutely <laughs> never knew that. Yeah, well, we're, well, what we're talking about with the gyroscopic precession in a gyroplane, hold this blade here for me, okay. Kermit. Let me show you. So we're going to release the, the hold on this. And so basically, when we turn right, You'll see that the, the rotor yeah. actually changes pitch there. This rotor is a counterclockwise uh, rotating rotor. So go ahead and center that up in the front. Yeah. Now you can see when we turn right, that increased the angle of attack on that, that rotor in the front. Correct? Right, yeah. When we turn left, that decreases the angle of attack on the rotor in the front. Right? Okay, okay. So as we turn right here, what that's doing is that's creating lift here in the front by increasing the angle of attack of the rotor in front of the gyroplane. So the lift is created at this point, so it's pushing up there. So it doesn't react until we get degrees. over here. Exactly. Okay, so when we turn, where you got to the right? I've got it to the right. Okay, correct. so when you turn to the right, that means we want this to tip over here. So we've actually increased the lift there, but it doesn't actually, it doesn't actually react here, so it tips it over there and it goes to the right. Exactly. Okay. Also, if you look at the back, we've decreased the pitch of the angle on the, the back. And all that's done through these push rods, this push rod system right here. Because when we turn when we turn to the, to the right, it lifts the left side of the rotor and, uh, and uh, decreases the, the angle of attack on the right side of the rotor. So you can see, because that blade is facing the opposite direction, because it's going the opposite way. Right. So that one's low. Right, that one's low. That one's that one's high. Okay, now move the stick back to neutral. And go back to the right. Back to the right. It's right there. Oh, that's to the left. Oh, to the left. I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so that's neutral. Go to the right. Go to the right. Okay, back to the neutral. Back to neutral. Okay, and back to the left. 
and neutral. Okay, pretty cool. I tell you what, man, that looks pretty Mickey Mouse to me. Oh man, uh, yeah. So, so this this in effect is like a helicopter. It's what got what they call a Jesus bolt. <laughs> right. Exactly. And any rotor craft is going to have a Jesus bolt on it. Okay. Is called a Jesus bolt because if it fails, that's who you're going to meet. That's right. <laughs> so uh, um, that's a very, very important bolt. However, every bolt up in that rotor system is very important yeah, in absolutely. reality. Uh, um, uh, the, uh, the system is a, this is a, what we call a semi rigid rotor system, so uh, um, which gets into complexities of a rotorcraft and mm -hmm. uh, coning uh, and uh, um, Coriolis effect, uh, all of that has to be taken into effect with the rotor system. There's three different types that uh, um, of rotor systems out there. There's rigid, there's semi-rigid, and there's fully articulating. Mm -hmm. The Pit Karen has a fully articulating rotor Which system. means it'll flap up and down and forward and backward. Exactly. So then explain to me why, because I know when Juan Sierra, Sierra developed the thing, the biggest bugaboo that they couldn't figure out was the, the the blade stuff they couldn't figure out how you know the once they started moving forward it continued to roll exactly. on exactly so they eventually solved that by having the blades flap up and down and forward and backwards so this one doesn't have they flap up and down because of the flex of the blades but why not forward and backwards the uh, it's only um, a two-bladed system correct yeah oh, okay. two-bladed systems uh, um, we're not having to having to worry about that because the they're physically attached to each other, so you don't have to worry about one balance is exactly. out the other one. Okay, so when you get anything over that, a three or even a four, I guess as right. well, then they've got to be able to to kind of find their little Correct. way. And the blade does that by moving forward and backward and going up and down on its own. Correct. It's uh, um, <laughs> now it also adds a little bit of complexity to an aircraft. Uh, um, a uh, semi-rigid rotor system is not going to get into uh, um, what they call ground resonance. The ground resonance uh, is an issue, uh, um, there's all kinds of videos on YouTube about it, where if, uh, if a rotorcraft lands uh, or uh, gets any sort of a bump, that those flat, those hinges uh, put the rotor out of balance with itself, right. it will actually break itself, it'll uh, it's get... A, it's a flutter problem. Right, exactly. It's a flutter issue. Yeah, in fact, there are times when I'm slowing down my Bell 47, which is a two-bladed system, right. but it doesn't, I don't think it does, oh, I can't remember. Anyway, have lead lag hinges. yeah, I, I, I can't remember, I'll have to go back and look at it, but basically there are times when it's slowing down, when you can feel it wanting to go and you're having right. to adjust the cyclic like into the wind to keep it from freaking hopping around and destroying it. So right. It's kind of a scary feeling. Well, the, the proper way, whenever, as far as ground resonance, uh, it, in the definition that I'm speaking of, uh, as far as ground resonance is concerned, the, the best way to get out of ground resonance is to lift the aircraft back off the, the ground. Um, and Easy it, with a helicopter, so what do you do with this? Right, and this, if you have the rotor RPM to take off, take back off. If you uh, if you don't have it, to, um, then shut the aircraft down. Uh, right. There's <laughs> a, a, typically, when that's going to happen is right after you touch down, so you should have a lot of energy still stored up in that rotor system. Mm -hmm. So uh, um, if if that's the case, you that's, have full power. That's assuming you're making kind of a smooth, like an airplane kind of a landing. But if you're coming in and trying to stop in 50, 60 feet, right. you're not going to you're going to lose all your. But but then maybe you go through it fast enough that it's not. The other thing is just make a smooth landing. Exactly. There you go. <laughs> make a smooth landing and everything's okay. Okay, uh, not an issue anymore. Right. So. Uh, um, that's the the basic principles of the gyroplane. It's very very simple mechanically. Hmm. Uh, um, aerodynamically, it appears simple. There's a, mm -hmm. um, uh, there's a number of complexities with it.